Assalamu alaikum students. Welcome to another lecture, another important lecture on you know it. Alright. Tafel's the course. Fine. And what is the course code? Do you know? 502. Alright. And what are we talking about these days? Remember? Yeah. We are talking about methods. Methods of what? Methods of foreign language teaching because our course is what TEFL TEFL yes teaching of English as a foreign language how are you students right how is everything how is weather today it's a bit cold outside no it's fine is it pleasant outside all right okay it happens right so let's come to the point which point can you see the slide? Yes. Alright. What does it say by the way? Which lecture are we going to have today in this morning? In this session? Lecture 9. Okay. Good. And if I ask you a question students. Right. What did we talk about in the last lecture? was lecture 8 all right and what was the method in the discussion ALM all right yes what does ALM stand for audio yes lingual fine means no not means try all right motor audio lingual motor no think again method yes good good this is fine audio lingual method and it is abbreviated as a l m fine all right so we had a detailed discussion on audio lingual method and you remember drills you remember repetitions fine and also you remember habit formation fine today we are moving of course to another method and I want you to guess. See, sign of interrogations. There are different signs and I, I want you to guess. And I, I gave you an inkling last, in last lecture. Which method? Yes, it begins with S. Alright. Sense method? No. Which method? Seeing method? No. Try again. Which method? Yes. Sense method? No, try again. C method? C method. Si silent method. Very good. All right. Yes. So, I mean, this, this, this guy really, of course, I mean, he uh, kept that thing in mind. I gave you a clue in the last lecture about today's very important lecture. So, yes, we'll talk about what? Silent method. I hope you're ready for it. Yes. Do you have your your pen, your I mean notebook, your text with you. Fine? Alright. So you need to have everything with you so that you can focus, you can attend. It's a very important method as well. And yes, it needs more attention, more concentration. Which method? This method that we are talking about. And you remember the La Larson Freeman, the text we are following? Okay, keep the text in front of you. That will also help you. Fine? So techniques and principles in language teaching and there is addition also it is published by Oxford University Press fine the book is with you notes are with you all right so students as usual what should we do today we will start the lecture yes what do we do generally all right whenever we start a lecture we review the previous one so as usual let's start let's reviewing in fact the 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 previous lecture so do you students here but again i want you to guess again which method is this keep on thinking keep on thinking all right so students here we are right silent way all right which method the silent way but before we begin this method 
right? What is this silent way? What is it about? What are the principles? And, uh, and uh, what happens in the class? We have to review the previous lecture. So we talk about audiolingual method, right? And we saw different principles, we saw different techniques that we use in the class, right? Who would tell me? All right, so we discussed that uh, drills are given to the students, repetition is done in the class, and there was chain drills, and there was what else? Backward drills, backward expansion drills. So, so that student would make their, make that pattern their habit, in fact. So in that method, in audiolingual method, we saw that the teacher gives what? Drills and extensive drills, right? The teacher starts with a dialogue. I'm going to a post office. Remember that? And then when he finds the students struggle in that sentence, so what teacher does, he breaks that sentence. So how does he break? He goes back, backward method. So he takes the last word, for example, post office, then a post office. Remember? So at the end, he says, I am going to the post office. What else does he do? Student? Remember that? Yeah. Then he brings variations. He shows picture to the students and then students, uh, in fact, make, make sentences using the same pattern. I'm going to the bank, for example. Or the students say, I'm going to a playground. So the teacher shows picture and then student, uh, right? What student do? They, they in fact student make new sentences fine and again the, uh, the mind you the pattern remains the same right and then again even the student the teacher I mean substitution method single substitution at time we, we, we replace the subject with with the pronoun I mean it can be he is going to the bank or the third person feminine she is going to the bank to the bank or post office clear See, so we saw or they are going to the post office, subject verb agreement, fine. And then again, we saw that there were drills, the teacher greets, right, Ali and Ali greets him back. And then Ali moves on, right, Ali greets Zia and Zia greets, I mean, Mustafa and there is an interaction. And ultimately this chain goes at the end and finally, what happens? Yes, the last student of the class, he greets the teacher. So, what did we call it? Chain drill, in fact. So, we saw uh, lots of drills in the class. And what happens when you have these drills, my dear students? So, that pattern becomes your habit. So, that is, of course, the purpose of this, the goal of the method, that teach in such a way the language that the, that pattern becomes habit of the students. And you remember that, of course, the background of that method Yes, we saw that, of course, after the World War, Second World War, Americans needed a native-like proficiency in the language learning. So, even Americans, they funded that, the project. And remember that? Yes, um, Army Specialized Training Program. ASTP, we call that program, and that was funded by, 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 by US then. So, and of course, and even linguists were working on that then, that, that we should have a method that would help students to learn the language. And again, the purpose was so that these students who would have that native-like proficiency in the, in, in the language, they would go abroad and they would be sent on certain missions. Is that clear? So that was the method of ALM, we call it audiolingual method. Again, we also call it what? The oral method. Remember that? Yes, so dear students, we call that oral method. Why? Because again, the audiolingual method, in fact. Lingual, you know, related with the speech. And again, we, we, we saw in, in the method that, you see, there is no second thought, for example. Right? You give drills, I mean, and then students, in fact, they forget to, to give a second thought to the pattern. They learn that, that expression in such a way and obviously they become more fluent in that. Clear? So these are some of the, uh, the principles and the techniques we, we, we talked about in, in the audio-lingual the, the, the method. And again, remember that the behavior, in fact, of course, behaviorism was the, the theory behind that. 
And what does this theory say? Well, that language learning is what? Habit formation through drills. The more you practice, the more you drill, the more you learn. And you need not to, I mean, think, of course, uh, the other way around. So, you see, you, you, you speak in such a way that as if you are speaking like a, a native speaker. And how can you do it? Yes, through through techniques, through through practice, through the drills. Again, the activities that the, the teacher uses in the class and the student become fluent in that language. Remember that. So, of course, this was the all that method all about, audio lingual method. I, I hope you have read that chapter, that topic from your the text and things would be more clear. Again, I tell you, it's an important method, particularly when you, you want to, to train, train your students, particularly, again, I, I personally feel that for, for cadet colleges, right, for army institu institutions, for military personnel, where they have short span of time, and then this method can be used. For example, people go on foreign the missions, sometimes they need French, they need German, in fact. So this method can be a success, right? So that they would, in fact, perform their, their, their jobs well. So this audio lingual method, in fact, the background I, I gave you was that as well. Again, now, see, the keep in mind the theory behind this, this, this uh, method was what? Behavioral theory, in fact. And what behavioral theory says that? I mean, yes, language is learned through through practice. Maybe in your class, sometime you have you, you you must have seen that what teacher gives, teacher does. He gives drills. In fact, he speaks a sentence, and everybody, right, uh, speaks their sentence in choral. In fact, so of course, right example that I mean, the, the of course, one sentence can be that this is ten o'clock, and then. All right, everybody says the same. So, in short, we could say that the, the repetitions, the practice, right, rehearsals, fine, help the, the learner, in fact, learn this language. So, that, that becomes their habit now. Now, we are moving, there's a shift, in fact, from habit formation to rule formation. So, in 1960, my dear students, now we are going to start this today's lecture, today's method, that is the silent method. So please keep that in mind, the habit formation, where, where the teacher try, to, of course, to, of course to, in, to teach language in such a way that, that that expression, of course, becomes habit of the student, language learning, that whatever they learn, it becomes their habit. Now there's a shift, now we move from that behavioral point of view to cognitives, right? Cognition, right? And the school of thought that, see, no, I, I mean, mind you, this, this, uh, this silent way does not categorically, I mean, the sport, the cognitive, but um, there are some principles, there are some fee features, in fact, that, of course, I mean, the, this silent way uh, incorporates. So, here, now again, try again, there is an image in front of you, you can see that what the teacher does yes there is a teacher and he quiets right so again there's an image that today we are going to talk about a method that is silent method this image says something what does it say students it says that well teacher remains silent right so not always but most of the time he remains silent and he gives clues to the students in fact. Autonomy is there of course, autonomy of the learners. So this image shows that. Again, there is another image, sound chart. You must have read in your chapter, sound chart. See, so what is sound chart by the way? There is a chart, I mean, about the, the whiteboard you might have seen in the class. So there is a chart and of course in this, uh, uh, chapter that you read what they have called sound chart in fact so once you the teacher points with a metal pointer to to a, a block to a rectangular uh, block what happens so there is a sound example uh right then a e o 
ooh. So there are different sounds, right? The teacher just says ah, and then of course he points to the class. So we will see this the proceeding what happens in fact. All right. So here is sound chart. Here, so in the introduction, my dear students, I I, I gave you that what, what was uh, why this. Uh, the audio lingual method was challenged, right? Again, that why it was challenged in 1960? Because the point was that you see that habit formation, fine, language is na nothing, right? Language is not an activity, not just, of course, not a system. That you see, you learn some certain patterns, learn some expressions, and you 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 would you would learn the language. Right? So language is in fact what? A thought process. Language learning is a thought process. So here I mean of course what? The universal opinion of learning language. What is it? That people, this is what people say, that universal viewpoint is that people learn language by means of ALM. So again, the point is that we have uh, uh, of course um, seen a while from now that people what? Form a set of habits. So in 1960, this idea was challenged. So who challenged it? Cognitive psychologist and transformational generative linguist. So they argued that language learning does not take place through mimicry. Remember that. We saw, of course, you you mimic mim mim. We also call it so to mimicry, right? You cannot learn a language. This is what these cognitive psychologists they argued and also mean these transformational generative linguist is question yes what is the question who are cognitive psychologists all right good question i want to refer you to your linguistic uh, uh, course all right fine you can ask your teacher uh, the linguistic t teacher but I would simply say cognition, right, goes with your mind, right? And it's a school of thought that says that language learning is a thought process. You think, right, and then you utter a sentence, there's utterance of course, so thinking goes on, fine? So that means cognition and the cognitive psychologist, psychology you know, what is this? Study of the mind, clear? So cognitive psychologist and then transformational generative again you might uh, of course have heard transformational grammar right TG so of course here mean transformational generative linguist they argued that well language learning is the language learning does not take place through imitation right and of course here mean again this is a contradiction that in the last method we saw dear students that well language is acquired through imitation through reinforcement and through what else so these are to imitation reinforcement audio lingual method says that but here I mean in, in this way this uh, is challenged in 1960 that language cannot be learned to this way language learning is a continuous thought process so dear students this was opinion of linguist Noam Chomsky a very famous name in fact what do you say? Speakers have a knowledge of underlying abstract rules which allow them to understand and create novel utterance. So we have, I mean, when, you, when the speaker speaks in fact language, so you have some abstract rules in your mind. There are, I mean, there are some registers. Language cells are there, of course. So what happens? Now, when, when a speaker tries to speak, what the speaker does? So he tries to create some novel utterances, new utterances, in fact. Is that clear? And then that 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 thinking goes on, right? I mean, whenever you 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 utter a sentence, you communicate a message. So maybe, of course, that is an assumption. That is a what your proposal, in fact, or your mafruza. And if your listener, right, gives you the response that you want, it means your your I mean uh, hypothesis is right. But if you, if you are unable to get the response that you want, then it means there is something wrong in your hypothesis. So dear students, yes, you have in your upper story, in your brain, right? What is brain? Of course, we have a structure here and left oracle and right oracle, of course. So 
you have all done and that I won't give you details here so the point is what Noam Chomsky feels that speakers have a knowledge of underlying what some abstract rules what are abstract rules right you know abstract noun yeah a noun that cannot be touched for example right wisdom is an abstract rule so you have thinking you have thought process what is it all abstract concepts my dear students that we have in our upper stories so the, of course the speakers have this knowledge and then of course the, these abstract rules allow us in fact to understand and also to create novel utterances like I mean like we of course very simple is that whenever we go I mean we, we communicate so we have to utter novel utterances we cannot have set number of patterns because language is a huge area in fact clear you understand all right so again the language is a product of rule formation right so of course there is a rule that you make in your upper story in your here so language is not that what there is a habit that you make right so we are not animals that you see when you I mean tame somebody and then animals would would do, do, do the same we are of course Allah has blessed us with upper story we keep on thinking in fact is that clear so what is the language is a product of rule formation of course this is what the silent method says and again what is language acquisition is a procedure whereby people use their own thinking pro yes again we use their own we use our own thinking processes and of course cognition what to discover that what to discover the language they are acquiring is that clear so simple is in simple words you could say that well that of course language acquisition right is a process of what where yeah, the people they use their own thinking process I mean maybe you see the child is acquiring a language fine you may not know but the child thinks in fact right the thinking process goes on and that's why of course different stages of language acquiring see that that of course you see that language improves from that going stage of a child to the babbling stage and then one word and I mean sound and a falls and the consonant and of course the one word and go on is that clear all right students fine so here has an image there that talks about what yes silent method here a student refers to a sound chart fine again refer to your text well students again another view of course that by I mean that we challenge the audio lingual method because students ability to transfer what the mastered habits to the real world communication the point is the students in they are unable in fact right inability of the student to transfer what the habits to the near real world of course right so we, you, you cannot do that of course I mean if you have that the pattern you have made that the, your habit but the point is that of course would not be enough would not be suffice and is that clear so if, if a pattern I mean if, if you I mean first of all we cannot have as many patterns right and the language itself right it's a broad area of course so we, and that those patterns may not help that's why of course this Norm Chomsky's view I have given you some more slide you can have a look that but language learning should not be a product of habit formation but rule formation right like audio lingual method says that language in fact learning should be what it's through habit formation right this is what ALM says but here I mean in, in a silent method the language is what a rule formation and again people create and understand novel utterances by applying their knowledge and all that so this is what just addition to the previous slide so dear students this is what cognitive approach which approach cognitive what does it say by the way language learners were seen too much more actively responsible for their own learning and engaged in formulating hypothesis to discover the rules of the target this is important that a language learner keeps on formulating hypothesis right hypothesis of what yeah what is hypothesis students maybe in your research you will do that a, a statement to be tested that is what 
hypothesis. So, so is the case for a language learner. A language learner keeps on formulating hypotheses, right? And I have already mentioned, my dear student, that well, if your hypothesis work, if you, whatever message you design, if you get your desired response, it shows that your hypothesis is valid. It brought the desired result. However, if you, in fact, uttered a message and your message, your, your listener could not decipher that message, could not understand that message, it means your hypothesis is not valid. Is that clear? So, so is the case here, I mean that when you the language learner, they, they keep on thinking. The thinking process goes on. Is that clear? Any confusion? So this is a, a, I mean, a point you need to uh, focus on that, that a language learner, right, keeps on thinking, right, and the th thought process goes on in his mind. That, and that thought process is that, well, of course, whenever you text somebody or you, I mean, communicate a message orally or in writing, so there is a thought goes on, right? And there is a, what? Hypothesis, right? And that hypothesis proves to be valid or invalid. And again, now who gave this method? Caleb Kittingo's silent way. He gave this method that teaching, should, this very important point, my dear students, teaching should be subordinated to learning. This is a very important point. What does it mean by the way? Think of, what is it? Teaching should be subordinated to learning. What does it mean? This is the point that needs attention of course. The point is mind you, the teaching and learning. Right? So subordinated to learning, it means learner is important. Is that clear? So when you, I mean, you, you're teaching must keep in mind what? The learner. Like again, I mean this is a debatable topic. You can have debates for hours on this topic and if you see around my dear students, your I mean institutions, your in fact curriculum and teaching particularly like I mean of course I would say from top to bottom in fact you see you have this from universities to colleges and if you the schools well I mean there is a curriculum, there is a syllabus in fact and learner needs are generally ignored. Whereas this of course this, this, this in fact uh, uh, statement is that teaching should be substituted to learning. That of course learner is important, his needs are important, need analysis of the learner is important. So the teacher should go as per the, as per the pace of the learner as per the needs of the learner. If the learner needs ESP, so give him ESP. If the learner needs, in fact, proficiency in speaking, so help him in speaking, in fact. Is the, if the learner is intermediate level, so treat him at that level. So at any level, of course, this, this statement holds water. Whatever subject you teach, in fact, so this needs analysis is important. And even the teacher writes the prereq, for example, that for whatever course you teach, when you set your goals, objectives, so you mentioned there that prereq for this course is this one, for example. But once you proceed, then you make it the teacher centered. Whatever you have, you teach the students. Right? Exceptions are there, maybe in for some institutions are there where, where they really, really consider uh, their learners. But again, of course, this, and this, uh, this uh, teaching is, sub must be subordinated to the learning in fact. So learners, what natural learning pace need to be ignored, right? So need to be here, that the point is that what happens, learners, well students, so I was talking about that, this, the learner's natural, natural uh, learning pace need not be ignored, right? So learner is important, fine? So his natural pace of learning should be kept in mind. And then of course, advantage of learner-oriented classes. That is democratic classes, clear? The class should be learner-oriented. The approach should be student-centered approach. This is what again I will refer to Kyle Jensen. Uh, a professor in uh, uh, Northern Texas University, UNT. So again, I mean, he 
focused on this, the method that now it's, in, it's a way, we are in the age that this student-centered approach is, is of course the best approach. And we need to switch over from that uh, uh, teacher-centered approach to student-centered approach. Either you are teaching them writing or speaking or listening or writing, all four skills, you see, being a language instructor, so this, this, this student-centered approach works well particularly for writing resource centers. All right, so again, learning outcome can be better. Yes, students. So again, this, this method, of course, the silent why. Why it's better? Because the teacher remains silent most of the time. Teacher gives clues and the student, in fact, do most of the work, right? So that's why this, of course, uh, silent method is a success. How learning take place? All right, learning is a process in which what happens? Which, in which we initiate by ourselves. Again, it's a very important point. It's a process which we start by ourselves. How? By mobilizing our resources, by utilizing our inner resources. What are these resources? Inner resources, perception, how you perceive things. Clear? And then awareness. How, how, how much awareness do you have? Right? And then again your cognition, your mental approach, and your imagination, how you imagine things. Also, intuition. Intuition, of course. Sometimes you intuit certain things. And also, creativity. This is what? Learning. Right? What is learning, students? Very important point. is a process in which we initiate. A process that we initiate, that we start. Right? How? By using our inner inner resources. What are resources these my dear students? Yeah, imagine, you ima imagination. You try to be creative in fact. And also, aware, your awareness is important. So, to meet what? Challenge at hand. So that's why of course we, now students again, in this uh, method, you have read this chapter, rods are used. Right? Cusinor rods have been used. Another image is there, of course, that here, you can see this image, the class is going on, and the teacher just uses gestures to communicate his message, and he remains silent most of the time. All right, there are, now let's come to the principles of this, uh, the method. So before I highlight the principles, students, I want you to tell you a brief about this class. In this class, what happens? Can you tell me what happened in this class? You all have read that. Okay, it's a class of elementary level. Fine. How many students are there? 24. All right. And then what happens? What are they talking? I mean, which, you see, they're talking about sounds. All right. Yes, it's a language class. Where is it? Brazil. All right. Brazil. Fine. So, what else is there? The teachers enter the class. He goes to the front. And what is there in the, in, in the class? Right. There is a blackboard. And there is a chart. Fine. What do we call that chart, student? Sound chart. And who would tell me what is there on the chart? There are some blocks. All right. Fine. So there are blocks in rows or columns. They are in rows. How many rows are there? Five rows. Okay. Then what else? There is a line drawn at the bottom. There is, of course, another rows of blocks. Blocks or squares. Yes, they are rectangles. Fine. Okay. So the blocks at the top, what do they show? Wall sound. At the bottom, consonant sound. All right. So, what does the teacher do in the class? Teacher points to the, those blocks, right? First time he points, silence. Again, he points, silence. The third time he points, he says, uh, all right, fine. And then he moves on to that metal pointer. And the student says, eh. Then, again, he move, moves on. Students say, what? E. Then, again, students say what? Oh, see? Walls, in fact. Right? Then, then of course, teacher repeats this three times. Then, a girl come, comes forward and she points to those sounds, in fact. Is that clear? So, what is it? Then, in this way, sounds. Again, here mean that, you know that, of course, languages have some features common, in fact. And the, the, the feature that is mostly common is sounds. 
So that's why generally, of course, mean we start with the sounds. In fact, here mean the Portuguese language. For example, the sounds which are common in Portuguese. If you start, for example, here in our country, if you if you if you intend to use this the method in the class, then you can use our sounds. For example, right the sound that you have. There are some common sounds in Eng of Urdu. For example, the sound in English, and we have the and also in in Urdu as well, right? So clear. In this way, the teacher what the points to different sounds. Then what else? Again, he uses rod, right? He uses what? He uses some rods, and what? There are different colors of rods, friends. Fine, right? They are blue. I mean, uh, pink or red, and there are different colors of rod. And what else? What happens in those rods? Yes, the teacher in fact asks students, right? Students so gather around the teacher, and I mean, he is of course he sits in the class. And the students gather him around in the, in the table, and there are those rods in front of him. Now, what he does, students, right? So again, the sounds sound chart is there, and then rod are here. So what does he do? In fact, sound is there from r, and then here. Then he says, ro, sound is there, r or d. See, and then rod. Then again, he had the sounds a a rod. Clear. See, and then in this way, of course, he moves on a pink rod. And here, mean a student finds it hard to pronounce that sound, uh, right? So other students correct him, helps him out. In fact, so in this way, the sounds that the student know, and the sound that they don't know, they they in fact, uh, of course, come to know about these sounds. Is that clear, students? Yes, yes, students. How does teacher work with the students? He works with the teacher through through gestures, right? For example, he uses what, right? His articulators. He doesn't. I mean, he just for ow for ow sound. Uh, see, he uses his gestures, right? To to help the students. In fact, so with the help of gestures, the student, in fact, give clues to the students, and the student, in fact, come to students pick those clues and they utter and they articulate those sounds. All right, students. So the teacher, in fact, gives clues to the, the students for different sounds, and also when he sees, he wants to differentiate between the long sounds and the short sounds. So see, balls. Example, e, e, e. So he uses also his hands, in fact, right? And again, right? The point. He, he doesn't say anything. Right. This helps the students, of course, that that how long the sound should be, in fact. Is that clear, students? So these are, of course, what gestures. I mean, the teacher uses in the class. He gives the clues, right? And the student also, all right, they do the work and they help each other. And again, there are some. Sometimes there is a repetition. Also, of course, mean that they repeat sometimes three times. Repetition is done, and then we move from one activity to another. Of course, all right, students. So here. So what are the principles of this method? Right, we have been talking about principles and techniques. What is the principle? An invisible thought. Right. So for every drill, for every activity, with the, for every technique, there should be a principle behind. You. Remember that. So you're all going to be good teachers, my dear students. Clear? You're going to be fine. Ready for it? Working on it? Good. You all have potential to be the best teachers in Pakistan. Fine. So you have, of course, there are lots of opportunities for you students. Yes, give time to this course, work hard, right? And you see, you will you will see that this 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 uh, uh, forum would be a platform. This platform would elevate you. In fact, you will fly once you would complete this course. So this is a very important course. Overall, this program is very, very important, and there is a huge scope for you in future. I, I, I told you in the very first lecture. In every lecture, I remind you, my dear students, are you with me? All right. So, see, don't get disappointed. You see, there is always room at the top, and for you people, there are opportunities. Yes, you have to do. Yes, you have to go an extra mile, put efforts, right? Do things well, work hard, listen. Write to good English. Write good English. In fact, try to speak good English. And you see, try to be, of course, whatever uh, techniques we are talking about. See, try to follow them, 
and read more about this course. The more you read, the better you would be, in fact. Once you read many authors, for example, I gave you initially five, six uh, authors, books, and I hope you can easily get these books and then read more and more. So that once you would complete this course, I mean TEFL particularly, and in general all other courses, so you would be in a better position to face the interviewer. You could tell the interviewer what is teaching in fact and what is teaching of foreign language and what is teaching of English. Clear? So if you keep this in mind and I tell you world is open for you, there are opportunities for you here in the Pakistan, of course in the Middle East, abroad as well. Right? So good language teachers and particularly English language teachers are always in demand. But again I would say there is a big but. For that you have to, yes, you have to work hard. So please work hard, practice things and try to get, make your concepts clear in fact. If something is confusing you, yes, you have access to technology in fact. You can google out things, you can I mean read research papers, you can go to libraries and, and things can be done easily in fact. Mind you in this age, right, knowledge, access to knowledge is not a difficult job in fact. You can, you can get things in fact if you have that urge, if you have that, that, that of course, that, that if you want to strive for the best, strive for the excellence, so things are out. Nobody can stop you, right? You can achieve your goals provided you put efforts, provided you, yes, provided you give time to you, TEFL. You give time to all other courses. Clear? Fine. Move on. All right. So let's start what? Principles of? Yes. Which method? Silent method. Silent way. All right. What's principle? Who would tell me? The teacher starts with something the student already know. We saw that, yes, student had an idea of sounds. So that's why, of course, mean in this, that when you use this the method, of course, so you, there is something behind, in fact, right? Student had an idea of the sounds. So this is first the method that we, we start, of course, we give this, of course, the activity is when the teacher points with this metal pointer, to sound and student, he just say uh, and then the students follow him in fact. It means students had an idea, right? So assume knowledge that they had some, they know in fact, they have no hope of, about these sounds. So that is what the first principle and what language shared number of features and sound being the basic. And that's why we start with the sounds. I hope you understand. So once you get to know the sounds of, of, of a language that you are going to learn, it, it motivates you in fact. Is that clear? So dear students, sound is, I mean, they are easy to learn in fact. And even language starts with the sounds. I hope you understand. That's why of course, we, when, you, when you start learning a language, a foreign language, so where do we start students? We start with the sound. So that is first thing, the first principle. Again, there is IMH. What does it say by the way? The students raise hand. Teacher just gave them clue here. Teacher is a female here. Clear? So again, silently learning is going on. Right? So dear students, here. Second principle, what is it? Teacher helps students and student work on language. This is important. In this method, what happens? The teacher motivates. Teacher work with the student and the student work with the language. See? Right? Again, the, of course, the teacher, just in fact, even how does he help the students? What he does with the students? What he does? He simply gives them clues. He simply, yes, uses his gestures. Right? So, most of the time, he remains silent, in fact. And what happens? The student try in fact to utter sounds clear and of course all learning is self-learning again very important point if you are not motivated to learn nobody can spoon feed you nobody can push you in fact so that is very important right if you want to achieve something yes you have to learn and learning is the self-learning for example right so whatever you absorb you conceive in fact is that clear? So that is what, that is your learning. 
self-learning in fact you learn from the environment you learn from people right so whatever you learn it is self-learning in fact and that what we have seen in this method as well so teaching does not ensure learning in fact fine if you want to learn something you have to put efforts you have to be positive you have to be professional you have to keep the end in mind right that well is this learning good definitely help me in my career so that is really important then learning is a natural self-motivated process again it's important point it's a natural process but self-learning of course learning is goes on right from day one till the last day from the cradle to the grief to the grave sorry so we, we we seek knowledge from the cradle we keep on learning right the learning goes on it never stops in fact right we learn from your experience you join an organization you learn is that clear you teach you learn you are a student you are learning and of course there are different styles of learning auditory learning for example oral learning in fact is that clear so learning goes on it never stops right students so another principle is that what the teacher remains silent and just points out to five blocks of color as we have seen in, in, in the proceeding of the class these are what these are sounds of English walls like we have seen a a a o u see all fine wall sounds are there simple walls of course there are some features which are common with Portuguese in fact so students are intelligent in fact and they learn the new language with their experience again we have the sounds right we start with the sound because sounds I mean they, they are common again another principle is what the teacher does not model the new sounds but uses gestures to show the students how to modify this For example a to a wall glide right a to a in fact fine so see his what he moves his, his gestures again and that modifies the sound that they know and then the sound that teacher want them to know from a to wall glide diphthong in English a in fact right so language is learned by repeating a model and develop their inner criteria in fact again students if you move on other principle what is it when some students cannot tape out if yeah definitely of course mean it is uh, that when you when you start learning a language so initially you may not pronounce that the sound of course it's a foreign language so you may not tape out you may not pronounce those words well so it happens it's a natural it's a natural process when you start learning a foreign language and then people yes some students they may, they may be good at for example it is said the Pakistanis speak good English why because maybe the sound pattern clear that the Urdu language and the English language because of their similar I mean the sound patterns they have more common sounds that's why we find it easy why Chinese always struggle in and learning this language English particularly Koreans as well so it's difficult for them to to learn English as compared to we people we are lucky enough that our sounds and the English sounds more or less they are they, they are more I mean sounds are common anyway so the students have to help one another by themselves again self I mean what is it we call it self correction or peer correction very important when the teacher corrects again psychologically it might of course uh, put the student in trouble clear so this is the point but when the peer correction when the students correct one another so that gives them what that that gives them confidence and learning is more in that case so in this particular the class they have to learn actively active learning in fact right teacher role is of course teacher remains silent he withdraws right and then learning is more active why because the teacher just listen attentively he just observe right he listens and at times he remains quiet fine so that's why learning is an active process not passive reception of what teacher says fine and learners are not recipients of knowledge they are explorers of knowledge again in this silent way what happens I mean the learners explore the knowledge in fact they don't just 
I mean, that whatever, whatever the teacher says, they just take it, swallow it. No, they try to explore knowledge with this method, dear students. So, what is the student? Move on, right? So, silence is a tool in this, in this way. Another principle is that silence is a tool. Wow, what is the purpose of this tool? Why this tool is there? Fine, because it helps to foster autonomy. It gives autonomy, it gives power, right? So student becomes independent and that independence gives them more confidence and their learning definitely, their learning, of course, a foreign language improves. Fine, so I mean teacher role is silent and the student make use of that that, that space so they, they what happens they become active le learners they initiate the exercise they follows the gestures of the, the teacher and definitely they they learn more I mean if you compare with the class where the teacher talks on and on and on and the students just remain silent so at the end we'll say well the teacher has learned more than the students yeah it happens sometimes in the classes Particularly in lecture methods, when the teacher comes and he has some, again I told you earlier, that the teaching should be subordinated to learning. Learning should not be subordinated to teaching. Is that clear? That we talked about earlier. So in lecture method, what happens, you, have, you must have seen that when the teacher comes, he has some slides and he goes on. So, he does not involve in fact. So this is what here means, the teacher remains silent, so that students would put I mean, put efforts, they would explore knowledge, in fact. So this, in fact, the point is, again, this is the slide, this is image that supports the viewpoint. So, when the students have trouble pronouncing new sounds and phrases, the teacher only uses gestures to point out errors. Fine, he does not say, right? In other methods, we saw that teacher corrects, so if you, if you compare with the previous methods we talked about, I mean OLM or G GTM in fact so here what happens yeah the teacher uh, you see this is what the teacher does he uses just gesture if the student says A instead of O so teacher use round his lips in fact is that clear if the teacher says E instead of E so sounds right and others also correct other students also Correct. So that's why the teacher correction acts as psychological barrier in learning, in fact. Even when the teacher corrects in, in front of the class, some students uh, find it hard. They say it's, it's a matter of embarrassment for them, for example. Right? They're well, but if, 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 if your peer corrects you, if your class fellow corrects you, so you may not find it that much, uh, of course, uh, hard for you. Clear? All right. So dear students, move on. What is it? After, in fact, learning new sounds and phrases, what happens? Students choose to tape out simple commands. Other tapes out to more. Yeah, again it depends. Right? That every learner has a unique route to learning, in fact. Some, of course, they, they, can, they take, in fact, simple command samples. Simple, I mean, of course, sounds. So, uh, for example, a white rod. Simple. A black rod. A red rod. Fine? Then one says, of course, he takes a red rod and Ali takes a black rod. Clear. So every learner has a, has a, has a of course, every learner varies in the pace of learning. Again, every learner has a unique route to learning because every learner has a different cognitive level. I hope you understand. No two learners are equal in fact. Like perceptions are different. Cognitive level of the learner is different in fact. Background of the learner is different. Is that clear? So again, educational background, the cultural background, the linguistic background. So again, that's why no two learners can be alike. Fine. So that's why, you see, that some some learners, of course, they, 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 they take the uh, in fact, uh, short commands, of course, simple, and some opt, opt for the complex commands, in fact. Why? Because language is for self-expression. See, dear students, what is it? Right? So, in the end, the teacher asks students for their reactions and comments to the task. Very important point, the feedback, in fact. So here, once you ask for the feedback, what happens? The student give you feedback in fact. Well, it was a very good class. 
no i don't i didn't like this class it was i mean just i i, I could not get anything for example and the third student says well it was so so but i mean i could not get this the sound and the rod and all that and this student says well it was good i improved my pronunciation right i i i learned new sounds i learned right uh, of course that what are the sounds the common in our language and of course the foreign language so this is a very good point that that students give them feedback right so students give the feedback and the teacher of course yes takes that feedback the teacher doesn't mind he listen to the feedback right so this is what the reaction at the end of the class when the students give feedback how was how was it in fact how was the class right and again maybe of course if that feedback may help you to have a better next class in fact because your the teachers plan for the next week in fact would definitely be in the light of this this feedback that students have given if majority says it was bombastic it was good so teacher can go on with that or teacher if if the teacher feels that well majority was I mean, so so they could not give uh, a positive feedback and and of course mind you that the teacher in fact doesn't mind getting negative feedback if the students say well it was not a good class so teacher in fact thinks he makes plans to improve i mean his his is his way his silent way in the next class so yes there is a feedback at the end and it, of course teacher accepted positively in fact so again students there is no homework assigned right so whatever this is a very good thing i believe yes well, the student would be happy there is no home assignment no work generally when we say that when the teachers do not give any assignment so well it was a good class that was everything was in the class and you see we 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 learn different sounds and of course different expressions also right and and there was no homework assigned right so this is of course another the principle of this uh, method silent way that there is the teacher in fact doesn't give homework maybe the teacher feels that well for this method the, the the classroom is is better because students are there fine and and they 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 help each other in fact and they try to learn self learning also and they they need to be somebody who would give them gestures so that they could they could uh, uh, produce they could articulate different sounds right that's why there was no homework assigned well dear students today is toward the end of this lecture i want to give you 10 important questions why today i should have given you this questions in the very first lecture on purpose i didn't do that right after discussing these methods which methods gtm then direct method then audio lingual method today we talked about silent method in fact silent way fine so we'll complete silent way in the next class but these 10 questions though i hope you know I want you to know these these ten questions. I want you to to have these ten questions on your fingertips, right? At the end of every method, you need to ask these questions, right? These are the ten questions. I call them T I Q. Why T I Q? Ten important questions. Tick we call them, right? So what is the first question? What are the goals of a teacher who use the method? With whatever the method is. right either it is alm either it is gtm either it is dm either it is sw as it stand for silent way clear this is the first question what is the what are the goals of the teacher g is important fine what are the goals of the teacher fine students clear so first point goals what are the goals of the teacher second what is the role of the teacher fine goals and role of the teacher also what is the role of the students question there are two questions fine third question what are some of the characteristics of teaching learning process question 3 again i tell you you must know these question these question would help you in fact in your for further in fact in tefl 2 once you make your lesson plan once you have your micro teaching is that clear so please know these questions and they should be on your fingertips 
First, what are the goals of a teacher? Second, what is the role of a teacher? What is the role of student, in fact? Third question, what are some of the characteristics of teaching learning process? Fine, question three. Now, question four. The nature of student-teacher interaction. I. Fine, nature of student-teacher interaction. Also, the nature of student-student interaction. Question four. Question five. What are the feelings of the student? Right? Sorry. How are the feelings of the students dealt with? Next one. How is language viewed? How is culture viewed? The next question. What areas of language are emphasized? Which skills of language are emphasized? And next question. What is the role of students' native language? Fine. Next question. What is evaluation? How is evaluation accomplished? Next question is, how does the teacher respond to student errors? Fine. These are 10 questions. And there is a mnemonic for TIQ. 10 important questions. First, G for students. Goals. Second for rule. C for, yes, the C. You want to go back? Go back to C. Here I mean C. The C stand for, come here students. C for characteristics of teaching learning process now then I for interaction between student teacher and student student then F for feelings of the student L for language which language skills are for me how language is viewed C for culture how culture is viewed A for yes students C A A stand for what I go back have a look A yes feelings language here right what else a students what areas of language fine and then here mean culture of course then what else this is what mean g r c i f l c a s n double e in fact this is an acronym you might i have taken all the first letters of these 10 questions just to help you that how you can know these uh, the questions how can you have this question on your fingertips? The first G for goals, second for roles R, then in fact characteristics C, and then if you move on, you have what? Nature of interaction, and then F for feelings, and then L for language views, C for culture, and then what? A for areas of language are emphasized, and then in fact uh, native language, N for native language, E for uh, evaluation, and then another E for errors in fact. So these are what there is a uh, mnemonic. I gave you a tip. I gave you. It might help you in fact to, to know these questions. So students, toward the end, you need a summary of this. Alright. Today we in fact started this method that is silent way in fact. Fine. Who gave this method? Caleb gave this method. And in this method what happens? Right. We talk about introduction right that of course this method there is a shift from that habit formation to rule formation clear and then here mean what happens the teacher remains silent of course right so and what happened the next now what else yes that definitely self-learning is there of course students learn on their own what else in fact well that teacher helps them through gestures right teacher in fact, I mean, autonomy of the learner is there, of course. And there is no psychological barrier on the learner, in fact. So this is what, see, the silent method talks about. And this method, uh, in fact, which theory is behind this method? Cognitives, in fact. Not categorically, completely, but you see that there are some principles of cognitive. They, in fact, are behind. They are, so I mean, incorporated with this silent way, in fact. So do you students with this? Right, uh, this lecture comes to an end on silent way. So, in the next lecture, we'll talk about what are the techniques of the silent way. Is that clear? So, I hope you have uh, understood things. If you have any queries, you can ask. Okay, good question. How to abbreviate this? All right, you can abbreviate it as SW, silent way. Any other? question all right question is who gave this yes you can refer to slides Caleb in fact 
C A L E B in fact is the person of course who gave this the method. Alright, this method is which theories behind? Alright, cognitive theories. Fine students. So that's all for today, today's lecture. See you in the next class. Till then, it's goodbye. Thank you all.